five days. That's Jerry. And, uh, and, and, and he shot on this camera and he just looked at it and went, what's this? And I was like, you shot an entire film on this camera. Yeah, so. Good story, huh? <laughs> the, there's movement. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, he's quite far back there. Hi at the back. Feel free to come and take a pew down here on the lovely clean floor. <laughs> But there is some chairs. I, I'm, I'm keeping talking. Yes, please. That's what I'm doing. Um, that, that's moved. <laughs> that was my armrest and it's just become redundant. Um, oh, the coal bag. This, this was given to us. Is she here? The, the girl who... Yeah, there you are. Um, what's your name again, sorry? What's your name again? Kathleen. She... Uh, Kathleen was one of the people who came over to help f Somebody film with us. No, I'm not, not, not. I'm talking about a bag, man. <laughs> Let me talk about the bag. It's gonna be thrilling. You watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wait until I'm, I'm the goody goody man. Got fake Rolexes and stuff in it. Uh, but she uh, very kindly came over to Dublin when we were filming a couple of weeks ago and. Uh, made us uh, each one of these bags. And that's that. Um, so, because it appears, have we only got one microphone? Is that the story here? We have one microphone. No one's answering, so I'll take it as a, as a yes. Yeah, is that right? Okie doke. So, if anyone has questions, I hope you got a good set of lungs. Because uh, you might have to shout. Um, so, or how far does it stretch? The front row people can probably, but then we don't need to you know, do a microphone, we can hear you from here. It's probably people at the back. Um, oh, there's a, there's a wire. Let's go and pull that. Um, do, do people have questions? There's, there's a few hands going up. Okay, this man here, go ahead, front row, easy. When is the film coming out and where will we be able to see it? Macken. <laughs> I didn't pay any attention to what you just said. <laughs> it was something about a film. Uh, the gentleman would like to know when the film is coming out and... Where will we be able to see it? That. <laughs> well, we only just finished shooting it uh, about seven hours ago. <laughs> Um, so, I, I, I'd say next weekend is, is probably not going to be in the equation. Uh, really, really, the plan is basically we're going to be doing post-production and then we're going to move on to a grade and then do sound and do music. And so that realistically won't be all finished till kind of end of January. And then we have to go and see where it goes next. So realistically won't be till probably this time next year. So September, October. And uh, after we win a Pandora and a Golden Bear, um, <laughs> We'll then decide how, you know, we'll, we'll pick our cinemas very selectively because it's going to be so successful. Thanks. Uh, yes. Yeah, just on the same question. Do you think it's going to come out in Italy? Or when? Yes. <laughs> There you go, there's your answer. Uh, we're getting through these quick. <laughs> I hope you've got more questions. It's going to be over really quickly. Hello. I'm, uh, I'm a cosplayer and I experienced this. As soon as I put on my costume, I kind of become the character. Sure. More than I would have been. Uh, so I wondered, is it the same with you, with you? As soon as you put it on, you're your character? Or do you <coughs> find the character inside of you before you go on set? <laughs> 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 That's... A Wow. That's a Percival costume. This is an Alex Bowers question. Alex, Alex is very method, so Alex should answer this. Alex is deep. <laughs> I don't quite know how to take that. Um, no, but didn't you, on your first day of filming up in Treffle, didn't you say, I couldn't, I don't know, I don't know what Gwen sounds like? <laughs> so it's true. I mean, that's the, you know, he doesn't speak like you, he speaks like Gwen. I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll actually tell you what's going to happen because when I first came on to do to do Gwen, uh, I had no idea what I was going to do, and I decided I was going to do a Scottish accent because that seemed like fun. And, uh, and then I got there, and the director was Scottish, and the first idea was Scottish, and I just completely bottled it. So I had no idea what I was going to do, and then it was really early, and I just started talking much deeper. And I was like, oh, this, this sounds really cool, I'll just do this. And that's what happened. So, I'm not sure if that answers your question at all. <laughs> but... um, what's hilarious about Gwen's voice is that when it's on camera, when it, when it comes across on screen, it does sound really cool. I'm quite jealous about it. When you're acting with it, it sounds hilarious. <laughs> Deep. But it, it comes across really good. So, well done, bud. Yeah. Um, but to answer your first question, which has completely gone from my head, um, to, you're saying when you get she was just saying when you put on a costume, does it make you feel like you're more in character? The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have a lot of costume. Like I'm missing. <laughs> yeah. Let me just get this so everyone can see this. That's hilarious. Okay, so what I'm holding a picture of here is, what's your name, sorry? Anya. Anya, in what looks like a Percival costume, and she's experiencing some of the problems we have with the cloaks. Um, one of them, getting them stuck indoors. Um, we are obviously in forests and stuff quite a lot, and you tend to lose your character a lot when you're supposed to be a cool knight, and then your cloak gets caught in a branch. So. Uh, yeah, we, we experience those problems. Thank you. There you go. What was your answer going to be? Um, I didn't know if I had an answer. <laughs> um, it's weird because I have like two different costumes. I was more did the banded thing and then became a knight. And I actually felt like the when I wore the, the chainmail, I felt a lot younger. Because obviously next to this man. <laughs> and this man. In chain mail. I just felt like a, I felt like a tiny little kid, which obviously probably helps. I think. I am, no. I'm a little boy. <laughs> I'm gonna stop before I embarrass myself. For a <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Favorite lines that you say in Merlin. Favorite lines you say in Merlin. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think you say sire really well. <laughs> That is more of a Rupert one, isn't it? So Leon, sire, uh, a message has arrived. Uh, uh, favorite line? Wow, that's a, that's a thinker. <laughs> I can't remember any of my lines. <laughs> oh yeah, you, do, can you remember all of your lines? I can hear before you, mate. What's the line? <laughs> Nobility is defined by what you do, not by who you are. Oh, I remember that one. <laughs> that was a good line, actually. That was quite an important line in the context of the show and the character, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember that scene. Um, next question. Yes. This is what, this is what you do, Tom. <laughs> For all three of you, what are your favourite filming locations in Merlin and why? Okay, this is like this is like a game show. This is like a game show. <laughs> uh, Compiègne because you're in France and France is great because you get cheese and bread and stuff. It's really similar. Uh, no, seriously, because Wales is really cold and you're in this really crappy studio, and uh, it really is just a big massive warehouse which they were too scabby to build a proper studio, and they just build it over sets. <laughs> Well, it's true. And then in France, you're in, you're in this really big castle. And actually, the funny thing about France was, um, as, as I was saying with Tom, part of the reason why we came back this year was genuinely because we're in France and all the fans are... <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Twitter man is Welsh, in case you didn't know. Yay! Nice. Hey! Hey! 
Uh, yeah, no, genuinely, part of the reason why we, well, I didn't, we both came back was because everyone was really cool. You got to meet people in France who went, oh, this is quite interesting because when you're in Wales, you're in the back of this industrial estate and you're quite isolated and suddenly you realise people really like what you're doing in the show and it's also, you're in a big castle. So, you there's know. One, there's one, um, it's, it's called Neath Abbey. Um, it, was, it gets used a lot. We have a lot of locations that we use a lot in the show. Um, no, but um, no, Neath Abbey is, um, there's a bit in episode two, is it, Sifa and Ruidan, and they have that little chat and he dies. <laughs> that, bit. That, that location there, that's, it's in Margham Park in Wales, and that's pretty, pretty cool. But they tend not to use it as much, or use it a lot, mm. as we tend to do. It's mostly just trees and mud, <laughs> isn't it? We have a location uh, called Forest Fower. And I've never spent so much time in one forest. Uh, that forest is used so much. Like we've used that for so many locations. So they do use the same ones a lot. Um, I'm trying to think of my favourite one. I think when it's warm, I like Treffle, which is... We don't have a favourite one because it's always really cold. We had a really crap day. Actually, is, this, is that episode five we're on that thing when we're stuck there with them? That's it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So next week, um, there's an episode where um, uh, we all go on a bit of a quest. Am I allowed to say that? Who cares? We, come on, we go on a quest every episode, seriously. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's, not, it's not a massive spoiler. Like, I, I, could, I probably couldn't even tell you what we're questing for because I, gen, I genuinely prefer to not know. And I'm like, what episode are we doing? What? Why? We're a bit dark. <laughs> well, that was a great idea, Alex. Yeah. Um, what the hell was I talking about? Yes, episode six, right? It was really, really cold and we all hated it. It was literally the most miserable two weeks of our entire lives. Um, and it's probably going to look like it's really warm and sunny. And we all hated it, just so you know. So when you watch episode six, we're genuinely in pain. Remember that one with the cloaks and the, the vines? And, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah. What's, what's good about that is that we were supposed to be, weren't we? We were in some horrible place where we just wanted to get out of it, and we literally did. It was, it was, it was terrible. Next question. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I was just hoping to be attempting to direct in about February, March, and in theatre, not on camera. Macken. I've never directed theatre. Um, and I, I don't know. Alex has done theatre and he actually has his own theatre company, which is very good, apparently. Um, no, it's, it is very good, so he would be the best person to send it online. Um, good luck. <laughs> no, um, um, advice is really strange. Um, what sort of thing are you doing? Like a small, short play or...? You may be on your own with that. <laughs> Make sure the actors learn their words. And, uh... Wow. <laughs> Say that again! It's a retelling of the life of Jesus Christ and his disciples set in modern-day Texas where he and all his disciples are gay men. <laughs> I mean, he's almost on the verge of genius. You are totally making that up, aren't you? You're basically making... Right? I have it with me. I'm stumped. I mean, who even thought of that? Who went, I've got it! Co what? Oh, yeah. He's a gay man from that town, so I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I know it well. <laughs> David Williams, is it? Oh, right. Um, next question. But I, I, I love the enthusiasm. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, so at the back, uh, let's go with one of these two here. Yeah, let's go with you on the left here first. And then... Speaking of gay men, do you guys ship Martha? <laughs> Speaking of gay men, what? Not everybody in the room wants to know. 
ship. Mercy. <laughs> Do we like the idea of Merlin and Arthur as a couple? <laughs> well, the uh, many nights sleep I've lost thinking about that, uh, I couldn't tell you. Uh, why is there a ship? <laughs> why do people not just say relationship? <laughs> Does it? I could have saved a lot on tweets if I did that. <laughs> What's that called? <laughs> There's people that say Gwen and Pert. Pert. Merlin and Mordred. What's that one called? I don't think. Mordred. <laughs> Oh, I love Mordred. <laughs> I walk out of the room for one minute, I come back in and you guys are just, uh, Lost it. Uh, so in answer to your question... <coughs> no. I don't think so. Hello, yes. On a much more serious note, where did the concept of cold come from? Ah, actually, do you want to answer this one or should I? I actually can answer this one. Actually, no, it's more you. Well, no, for, for me, I, I said um, to Macken, uh, we were filming series four, halfway through series four, I think, it was at the end of series four, um, not that's relevant. Yeah, September last year. And I said, you know, how I, I really want a sort of a challenging part, and, you know, I, I've sort of been given quite a lot of parts that are. You know, either the muscle man, Mr. Percival over there, and, uh, you know, the parts I've played have been sort of, you know, to my type or whatever. And I said, I really want a challenge, and, you know, my dream part on stage would be uh, Lenny in Might and Men. And I said, uh, I'd love to play a part. Oh, a little reaction. Uh, uh, I said, I'd like to play a part like that. And he said, I'll write you one. And uh, cold was born. Then you can carry on with your concept. That's a very good. That's actually what happened. Yeah. And then I just wrote it on the tube for the next six weeks, and then um, just created these two characters and went, Ah, oh, this would be nice. Just going to end the country side and make this little film with just me and Tom. And then it just became loads of other characters. And then, as it happened, it was a it was a very simple script initially. And thanks for holding the mic. And um, <laughs> this is great. Uh, and then because of the people who came on, um, like Jack and so forth, Jack Rayner and different people, it meant it was able to expand uh, into the, the world as it were and became a much bigger film, which became much more difficult to film and much more expensive and much, much more time consuming. So initially I wanted to make something in like just a week, just me and Tom. Because um, it was kind of, a, I'd worked with this guy who'd made a film called I actually can't remember what it was called, but it was, it was basically a two-hander, and it was really, really good, and I thought, great, so it'd be a two-hander with these two characters, and then it became really, really big, but initially it was just uh, writing a film for Tom, because when he does this kind of plaintive, mournful face of, I really want a part that's really good, you kind of go, oh, okay, fine, you know, yeah, so I was like, all right, come on, yeah, 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 do the face. That, that, that's pretty much the face. So I was like, yeah. So that, and that... It came from that, and then it also came from, as, as I waffled in the Indiegogo video, it was genuinely um, around the same time I'd been, I'd been rereading East of Eden. And then that's why I started to base the two characters uh, loosely drawn from East of Eden, from the Trask Brothers. And then uh, I ended up just sort of from watching certain films, Paris, Texas, and so forth, and Three Colors Red. And it was those two films that kind of also informed some of the film and then it kind of went down different directions just because they're some of my favorite films and that's where it all kind of and then because alan and his band are finally doing their album after about 17 years um no no the, but the divora are amazing and uh and then also because i know what the music sounds like that also allowed me to kind of write according to seeing hearing the songs and then there you go yeah you're falling asleep <laughs> I was checking my Twitter, <laughs> looking for some ships.
<laughs> I'm on there. Who's is this the cold con hashtag? Is anything? Is everyone keeping an eye? Is anything interesting happening? Okay, at the Maple Leaf, grabbing a burger and cider before heading to Colcon this PM. PM. Has a PM been around offline for a while as well? Oh, right, this PM. Uh, Colcon. Question time. Valeria. Pick Twitter. Let's see the picture. Pick Twitter.com. Feel like I'm at a conference. Uh, this is. Uh, oh, look at. <laughs> That's. I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> this. I'm just holding here. Have a chew on that. What's going on here? Why do I look like a. <laughs> Why didn't no one tell me I look like an idiot? Um, next question. Yeah, it's quite hard to do the whole backstory thing though, because you kind of have to, you know, unless you just have an episode where you talk about your past, you know, there's not, there's not really an opportunity to, they don't delve into the past very often, so yeah, it's quite... Very true. Can I be honest with you, right? <laughs> we, 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 we did say that a lot, and, 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 and the problem was they just don't listen to us. <laughs> No, no idea, no idea. Um, it was it was a time bit frustrating because I mean from all from yeah from uh, Sir Leon and 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 Elian and and Percival and Gwen, not so much Mordred because we were like who's Mordred? Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, there, 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 there was definitely much more much more scope to expand with character development. But I think the way the the way the show works is I don't think they felt comfortable going off into that because then we would have taken over the show because we would be so good. And then, <laughs> Yeah, I, hey, I agree with you, you know, I do, yeah, so. Thank you for asking quite well. Okay, cool. Hey, when he asked a question, oh my goodness. We'll come back round. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um, you said in one of your blogs that you were going to be doing the English Brothers. How's your English accent, or is there a reason for This is my English accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deadly serious. <laughs> Yes, it is. To, well, it is. Well, it is. Well, that. Well, the Trash Brothers are also based on Cain and Abel, so it's all drawn from that. Yeah. Well, to be honest, it was mainly because there was no way Tom could do an Irish accent for a whole film. I could. <laughs> do I need to say anything else? I mean, it was so. I, I didn't particularly want to have to do that, but it's literally that. That again was one of the things that happened in the film, which actually ended up becoming very important and made a lot of sense. But that was initially, genuinely, the reason why, because I heard Tom's Irish accent and went, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not doing it for you. I'm not, I'm not like Tom. Tom could do anything on, on the spot. I get really awkward and I just kind of, yeah, I, my throat closes up and I want to cry. So, yeah, I know, I know, I know. More questions. Who's picking them? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Alex, you pick. That was great. This girl here. <laughs> this girl here. Yes. Where did your um, being Gwen how long does it take to do your hair? <laughs> does it not look the exact same as right now? Pretty much. Yeah, I just get out of bed and just don't shower all week. Genuinely, I don't, wa don't really wash my hair all week. <laughs> you did ask. I mean, look, if I wash my hair, it gets all fluffy and bouffant. And it's like, like that, and then they have to put loads of gels. So if I just don't wash, I do. I do shower. I just, just don't do shampoo. Or... Uh, <laughs> do you ask me that question as well? <laughs> Hours. Actually, it is only about ten minutes. I swear to God, it's very quick. L'Oreal. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
Oh, you actually, I, I, I answer that question because that, that's, that's just me. You um, uh, uh, answer. Yeah. Um, what do I have in common with that? I, I talk a lot more than Percival. Um, I'd like to think that I'm fairly protective. Percival's a pretty protective guy. Um, he's, a, he's a BFG. Uh, I like to think I am that. Sometimes. Um, no, I am. Alex? Um. Oh, I don't know. Um, I like stabbing people in the back. <laughs> no, um. I've seen it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, Mordred has a lot of that's a heart, I suppose. So, truth. There you go, that's all the reaction I wanted. <laughs> all right, yeah, boom! <laughs> Next question. Um, in the court? Yep. Uh, do you think you'll need some more funding? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but, uh, to be honest with you, the, fund, the funding for this, um, thank you all, actually, yeah, thank you all for coming here and, and being a part of this film. So that is the whole point of this. Um, initially, I was just paying it for myself, and then I realised I was going to be destitute, and that was a really bad idea. <laughs> uh, and then I'd have to go back and live with my mum, which would be really awkward. Um, <clears throat> so at the moment, I, th I think with this, we've, we've enough to move forward and finish post-production, and then we're going to try and apply it to the film board to get the final post-conviction funding, because obviously once you finish it, there's all deliverables and so forth. So it kind of depends, but I think at the moment, with this convention, so thanks to you guys, we should be able to get um, the vast majority of it done. Because we shot on, on 4K and the red, it really is quite beautiful. Um, but it means that there's an awful lot of, of work that has to go into um, um, the soundscape and, and the grading and all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know. I think so, you know. Um, but to be honest with you, it's been a bit of a mad few months just from start to finish when we first started shooting to right now. So uh, we're going to be able to collect our thoughts and then figure out what's going on. But if you are offering... <laughs> I'll find those. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got time for two more questions. Uh, right, who's had the hand up? Aids, I don't even know. Yes, this girl here has, I think. Yes, yeah. Um, we get asked this question quite a lot. I got tips on this. <laughs> Genuinely, it actually has taken, I've been doing this for eight years, Tom's been doing it seven, Alex is a blow-in. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 think, I think Alex will be able to answer this after me because he went to drama school and so did Tom and I didn't. Um, I dropped out of one or two drama type things, I did private training, but it, I found that the best way was to actually make your own short films and do your own monologues and make stuff because then you actually start practicing working with a camera and you see what you do and then you start working with accents and with characters and then you also have something filmed to be able to give to people because the worst part is people who are actors or actresses and they have a headshot but it mightn't be a great headshot but they have nothing to show you so you really need to have at least a five minute reel of something and if you you can go and shoot that stuff very simply I think even like the iPhone 5 you can shoot HD footage and get a little recorder, and actually you can properly make something interesting. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Alex will answer the question about drama school. I'm a big champion of drama school, so like, it was the best three years of my life, and probably the training, whatever drama school you go to, the end goal is always to leave with an agent or... <laughs> this is, I'll do my monologue now, shall I? Um, no, so I, I think that if you're at an age where you can start considering drama school, then do it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last question? Yeah. Um, who are your favourite superheroes? Wow, what a great one to end on. <laughs> favourite superhero? Wolverine. Owen Mackin. <laughs> um, 